The test of the machine is the satisfaction it gives you. There isn't any other test. If the machine produces tranquility, it's right. If it disturbs you, it's wrong, until either the machine or your mind is changed. Robert Piercing, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Welcome to EOS Weekly. This week, we'd like to talk about one of the biggest differentiators between EOS and its competitors in the third generation blockchain space. And that differentiator is EOS's connection to human beings. You see, what Dan Larimer has known ever since the BitShares days is that blockchains should not be isolated from the community using the blockchain. Just like any system, Blockchains need to be able to evolve over time. And the direction in which they evolve should not be on autopilot and should not be in the hands of an elite set of programmers nor miners. When an elite group of people are making all the decisions, that is your true bottleneck when you're striving for as much decentralization as possible. The ByteMaster knew, years and years ago, he knew that human beings using the blockchain should be the same ones who determine in which direction that blockchain evolves. How conservative versus how experimental. And when it does experiment, what types of experiments is it interested in pursuing? Up until now, there has been one and only one way in which EOS token holders have had their voices heard, and that is through the election of block producers. But now, a second and very important control is coming into existence, and that is the referendum voting process. This process enables the community members to propose enhancements and vote on which of those enhancements to move forward with, which ones to implement and which ones not to implement. The referendum process gives the community true decision-making power over the direction that EOS takes. The referendum process is still in beta, but even with this version, we may be able to get a consensus on things like base layer arbitration. Having this sort of X-ray vision into the desires and opinions of a crypto community is something that every blockchain community should have. And in the future, most if not all public blockchains will have some version of this. Getting us to this point where we have this voting process in place took a little longer than we may have liked, but building this piece of functionality wasn't as simple as it might sound. Some of the complexity was due to the use case of people voting and then unstaking afterwards. The tally needs to be recalculated over an extended period of time to show that proposals maintain a certain level of yes votes over no votes. So any scenarios where a vote could change needed to be accounted for. This ongoing tallying also led to complex scenarios with proxy voters. When a proxy votes and then some of the token holders under that proxy override the proxy's vote, that scenario needed to be accounted for. But thanks to the hard work from block producers such as EOS Nation, EOS Tribe, EOS Canada, Generios, and Graymass, these obstacles have been overcome. Now the community as a whole can have their voice heard. Soon we will have the opinion of the token holders as to how much power arbitration forms like ECAF should have or should not have over the block producers, which is a huge step in the right direction towards a ratified constitution. And this is just one of the first examples of where we need this thing. The people now have a steering wheel to direct the ship. It might not turn on a dime like a speedboat, but slowly, slowly but surely, we can navigate this thing towards what we believe to be the most prosperous direction, to a realm where we believe EOS will have the best possible chance for success. Now, here's where things get really interesting. With this voting process in place, not only can we vote on typical proposals to changes in the behavior and functionality of EOS, we can also use this same mechanism to change the referendum process itself. We could make it easier for referendum proposals to be approved, or we could make it more difficult for them to be approved. So let's say hypothetically, we wanted to change this Titanic-like ship and make it more maneuverable, more like a speedboat. We could do that. We could use the referendum process to vote on and make it easier for all future referendum proposals to pass. This is dangerous territory though. It's important for systems to find just the right position on the spectrum of static versus dynamic. Some of you may have read this classic by Robert Piercig, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. 
But Robert Piercig's follow-up book to this, Leela, is also a great read and is relevant here. In Leela, Piercig describes the world in terms of what he calls static quality and dynamic quality. Every system needs both of them. The static is what keeps systems from devolving into total chaos. It holds things in place. And dynamic quality is what pushes systems to evolve and grow. It is the driving force behind the change. Systems and organizations need to find the right balance between these two opposing forces based on the purpose and the desired longevity of the, that system or organization. Startups need to be more nimble than say the US government or the Catholic church. Although organizations like the US government and Catholic church would probably benefit from being slightly more responsive to the changing times. But even startups can't survive too far towards the end of the dynamic scale forever. Customers expect consistency. They expect reliability. And this means startups can't be too drastic. As they find their product market fit, they need to shift gradually towards being more static. How fast is the blockchain ecosystem evolving? Fast. We all know blockchain years are far shorter than dog years. Just look at how much has happened since the mainnet launch in June. All the EOS chains will need to evolve at some pace to stay competitive. Some of them may need to crank up the dial on the static dynamic spectrum and take more chances in order to stay competitive. Others may find a stable place more on the static end and their stability could even become their competitive advantage. But blockchains that go too far towards either end of the spectrum are likely to run into difficulties. Those that are too dynamic may venture into dangerous chaotic waters and perish. And those that are too static risk turning into dinosaurs and getting passed by. There's a balance here and each blockchain needs to find their own. This is the multi-dimensional chess game that the communities of each blockchain will be playing against one another. In the Telos version of the Constitution, which they call the Telos Blockchain Network Operating Agreement, the TBNOA, they have similar criteria for ratifying a proposed change as the EOS mainnet. They, like the mainnet, want 10% more yes votes than no votes. And the voting period is about three months, which is similar to the 120 days in the mainnet Constitution. The difference is that Telos does not have this requirement that the 10% more yes votes than no votes be sustained for 30 continuous days. This is where we ran into a lot of edge cases on the mainnet that made building this referendum tool difficult. It's possible Telos left this part out due to these technical difficulties. Another difference is the 700 Telos fee which must be paid to make a proposal. This is their way of filtering out spam proposals. We don't know yet how the mainnet is going to filter out these proposals. EOS Nation and other BPs are working on this and are well aware of the filtering issue, and there's discussions underway on how to address this. The last thing we wanted to cover in this episode was the relation of the referendum voting process to the worker proposal system. In this Seinfeld episode, the rental car that Jerry reserved isn't available, and Jerry goes on a spiel about how anyone can take a reservation, but the real question is whether you can hold the reservation, and how holding the res reservation really is the most important part of the reservation. Will these blockchains, these decentralized communities, have the structures in place, the funds and the resources in place, to deliver on the referendum proposals that they approve? Because these blockchain communities might have all the ambition in the world and the willingness to make all sorts of changes to their blockchain, but that doesn't mean it's going to magically happen for them. These changes don't come for free. They will require execution, and this means resources, organization, and infrastructure. The referendum voting process and the worker proposal system go hand in hand in this way. The worker proposal system is the primary method by which the communities implement the changes that they approve. Without a worker proposal system, how will they execute? The mainnet can choose to rely on Block 1 for this, but what if Block 1 disagrees with one of the approved referendums? It would then be up to the block producers to deliver the change themselves or potentially some other developers out there who'd be willing to do it pro bono or something. This is the danger in not having a worker proposal system. Not having one handicaps your ability to evolve your blockchain in the direction that you, you, the community, want to evolve it. To paraphrase Seinfeld, anyone can approve a referendum. The question is whether you can implement the referendum because implementing the referendum really is the most important part of the referendum. You can see the referendum process in place at eosvotes.io, graymass, blocks.io, my eos toolkit. The full list is here in this blog post by eos nation. There's also a video in this same post of a discussion between Daniel Keyes from EOS Nation and Thomas Cox, 
where Daniel walks Thomas through the referendum functionality, discusses the challenges they faced in building it, and the still unsolved problem with how to filter proposals. Thomas also talks about some of the first use cases for it. The link to this post is in the show notes below. And finally, a big congratulations to Nougat and to all the finalists who participated in the EOS Hackathon in San Francisco last weekend. Speaking of the human element of EOS, these events are truly showing off what an amazing, close-knit community we have here. What a great thing to be a part of. It truly feels like we're in the midst of making history. Something that has a real chance of changing the world for the better. That's it for this week's episode. Don't forget to like this video if you haven't done so already. And if you found this content informative, please subscribe to our channel. We will help you stay current on EOS as this revolution unfolds. Thanks, and we'll see you next week, right here on EOS Weekly.